Good evening and welcome to our Sunday evening video for March the 14th, 2021. My name is Steve Altide, the pastor of Park Street Christian Church here in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Thanks for inviting me into your home or office. I want to share tonight um, in conjunction with a blog piece by Kim with Harvest Prayer Ministries about forming a holy character through prayer. Andrew Murray stated, when God gives the Holy Spirit, his great object is the formation of a holy character. It's a gift of a holy mind and a spiritual disposition, and what we need above everything else is to say, I must have the Holy Spirit sanctifying my inner life if I am to really live for God's glory. End of quote. So every morning our prayer ought to be, Father, show me how to be more like Jesus Christ today so that you're going to be glorified and honored. So knowing that every day I'm going to fall short of that goal, I still can take joy in the smallest victories to this end. My flesh loves to be in control and stubbornly clings to sinful things like anxiety and pride. However, God's word faithfully restores my confidence in his ability to transform my heart and my life day by day. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the voice of Christ within me speaks moment by moment in everyday ordinary life. I must bring my sinful thoughts, actions, and words to him as quickly as they arise so that gradually they will give way to his thoughts, actions, and words. I pray to be less even though everything prideful in me seeks attention and it seeks recognition. But this is not an easy struggle. But growing up in Christ is a narrow path strewn with worldly distractions and insidious idolatry that sets itself up against the transformational work of God. It's a battle that can only be won in the spiritual realm, not by my own determination and desires. So that's why we must spend significant portion of time in God's Word. Um, I think, remember the board game Trivial Pursuit? Um... I think that describes well how a lot of us, even as American Christians, live. Uh, otherwise, why would what's going on with the Kardashians or the royal family members and all that kind of stuff be even appearing on our news feeds, on our browsers, when we open up Bing or Google or whatever it is that you uh, search through? All this stuff that's trivial pursuits is distractions that Satan can use. We've got to fight that. We've got to invite the Holy Spirit and the Word of God into our heart and life every day to fight that. Because without dying to my flesh, the formation of Jesus' holy character in me cannot be made manifest in me. Paul recognized that God's children are susceptible to the deception of darkness without complete faith and trust in the one who created us and knows us best. Therefore, in his letter to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, he shares a powerful prayer that prayed for our lives and the lives of others will transform us more and more into the image of Jesus Christ. This is a crucial prayer for us to learn and to pray regularly and to pray regularly for others. It reads like this in Colossians 1, verses 9 to 12. Colossians 1, verses 9 to 12. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. What a prayer. What a goal. That's the thing we ought to be praying for our brothers and sisters in our church congregations, for our Christian family members, for each other. There is a lot to be gleaned from 
the purposes of Paul's prayer for our everyday lives, how we, God's people, need to be filled with the knowledge of God's will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So often we struggle in the flesh to know the will of God, yet do we ever ask to be filled with the knowledge of his will? This is a powerful prayer request. But again, I think in our our microwave instant communication culture, we want everything so quick, so automatic, that we hope that we can just pray a phrase and everything's going to be in order and we don't have to do any hard work. We don't have to, do, we don't have to practice any discipline. And discipline is not is not what our culture is known for, hardly anyone in any realm, you know? Um, it's kind of went out the window the last few years with easy grace and, you know, people believing they can pray the sinner's prayer and that makes them a Christian and there's no discipleship. Um, I think we've... We've deceived ourselves with easy grace. Uh, no one will ever earn God's salvation. No one will ever do enough good things to be deserving of salvation. That's not the issue. The issue is we still have to cooperate with God's Spirit and His Word to mature Christ-like character. And that's God's goal for us. Not to just take us to heaven when we die and let us live like we want to live in the meantime and, and live out the American dream. But to live according to his dreams, we have to die to self. And that's by and large went out the window. Um, Father, we need to pray every day. Fill me with the knowledge of your will in my life through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And then cooperate and give the Holy Spirit ammunition to work with in that process by spending time reading God's word. There's just no substitute for that. Still, it's important to recognize that the term spiritual wisdom has often become twisted in our culture. Not everything with this label is Christian in nature. We have to be vigilant to ask the Father to fill us and those for whom we are interceding the Holy Spirit with Holy Spirit wisdom through the very mind of Christ so that we may have a clear and perfect understanding of God's will for us. The result, we and others for whom we pray will begin to live lives worthy of the Lord, pleasing Him with every good in every way, by bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, and being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might. And there will be, will, we will begin to see the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit moving within and throughout our day-to-day -day lives. Is there anyone who would not want such a prayer of blessing and power? And Paul prays for the believers to be strengthened so they might have great endurance and patience to withstand whatever struggles, trials, and persecutions might come so that they might be enabled to joyfully give thanks to God in the midst of their day-to-day -day lives, whatever may come. I am eager to give thanks to the Father when I'm comfortable and life is going well and it's not raining and flooding our basement or the church basement or... There's not church members with crisis going on in their lives that I get swept up into. And who I vote for gets elected and all that kind of stuff. Uh, however, only his supernatural strength upholds my joy when I don't get what I want and when things don't go my way and when there's obstacles and the days are long and the nights are longer. So how many do you know who need the courage of God in their lives right now to endure a trial? Maybe you need that in your own life right now. Isn't it a powerful encouragement to see those saints who are able to live in full joy and confidence in the midst of pain and difficulty that God's put in your life, those people? Today, as we face the distinct likelihood of the end of days and the potential suffering that may take place in this country, we must be prepared to endure with the strength of the Holy Spirit to live out holy and victorious lives in the midst of it. Pray that God will give you and other believers such strength that you may joyfully give thanks to God who has qualified all of us by His grace to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. 
The way of holiness is to walk in the way of Jesus through the power of his Holy Spirit. And as we pray the powerful word of God into our everyday lives and crucify our fleshly desires to lean into the desires of our Father, we will live more fully within the kingdom of his light. We will know the will of God for our lives and please him in every way. We will be given his strength and be sustained by joy and thanksgiving. So may the formation of the holy character of Jesus continue in us all for the glory of God. Father, we come to you asking you to continue to do the work you desire to shape and mold us every day, every night, through all that we experience in this life and through the power of your Holy Spirit in us and through your word of God being um, becoming part of us as we feed on it, as we drink from it. Help us to yield completely, to cooperate in self-discipline, allowing you to accomplish what you desire for us. You need our permission. We certainly need your help. We surrender. Help us to surrender completely, that you might do all that you desire in our hearts and lives, that we would look more and more like Jesus to the lost world around us that desperately needs something solid to hang on to for hope. We are here in this moment for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen.